Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm coming on today to give you my winter wash and go routine. So as you know, I do wash and goes pretty much year round. A couple of times I will do a twist out if I go to the stylist or if someone interrupts my wash day and I have to stop my wash day mid <laughs> mid wash and it dries. I don't usually wet it back to do a wash and go, I'll just twist it. But generally I do wash and goes year round. So I wanted to show you guys how I do it because I hear a lot of people talk about you know, they can't do wash and goes in the winter. I mean, I'm not in the coldest area, but it's 9 degrees outside right now. So I do get cold weather. I do get snow and stuff like that. So I decided to come on here and let you guys know how you can achieve a winter wash and go. And what my winter wash and go process is. So first of all, this is a wash and go. And it's winter. And I did my process. And I filmed it so I could show you guys. So yeah, my hair looks shorter. I did get a haircut as well. When my stylist asked me how I wanted to do that, I was like, okay, go for it. And I'll talk more about that in a future video. The main goals with the winter wash and go is fast drying time and moisture retention. So of course you want that all the time, but especially for winter, you want that. So first of all, I don't use any leave-in products with glycerin or sorbitol or any non-film forming humectants during the winter because I don't want those products to suck the moisture out of my hair. I do continue to use products with agave and honey and aloe vera juice and so on because I find that those don't negatively affect my moisture levels in the winter. I just cut out the really drastic humectants like glycerin and sorbitol. So the products that I use for this wash and go are the TGIN Green Tea Super Moist Leave-In which is really moisturizing and doesn't contain glycerin. So in the summer I might use lighter products and products with glycerin and you know big hair I don't care and stuff but in the winter I try to use richer and more moisturizing products so this definitely fits the bill for that so then i use my diy hair custard or hair gel right now i'm using like an okra base gel to finish set my wash and go give me my week long hair help me retain moisture of course i didn't put any glycerin in that <laughs> and then i use my oil mix which is mostly just almond oil castor oil and grapeseed oil just for to seal in the moisture basically i do my regular wash and go so take a look at my process of course for winter you will you know squeeze out the extra water if you could like just kind of go right down and get rid of the extra water so when you're smoothing I usually I don't always go right down but in the winter I do just to kind of get rid of the extra water so that's my first tipish the second thing I do is add oil well I don't always do this but the second thing you can do is add oil over it so that actually helps to seal in the moisture and it also helps prevent a cast if you're using anything with a cast. Add oil over it. Just a little oil over it like that. Alright, so this is that. I just do my usual shake. When I'm done shaking, my other secret weapon would be this. So I plop. I haven't really gotten good at tying it, but the main thing is to do it. So let me just do it. I come back up and show you. So you want to keep the pattern will be on top on your wash and go kind of inside like together and the t-shirt should hopefully only be touching the bottom. So I kind of just fold it around like this and then I just kind of stick a clip in kind of sideways to secure it and the aim is just to leave this on maybe 15-20 minutes just to get some extra moisture out and you can feel free to pat it like this because again this is the bottom of your wash and go. So just try to get some of that water out. <laughs> and my ends I just leave loose. But you can try to bundle them, but just to avoid frizz on the ends and stuff, I just kind of leave them loose like here. But everywhere else is wrapped in my t-shirt. This just helps to take some of that water out and help it to dry faster. Okay, so taking it out. This is after 20 minutes. So you can see it did a good job, it didn't frizz out overly and it's a lot drier to me at least than it was before. For something like overnight, 20 minutes is fine just to get out most of the water and then from here I just um, air dry until bedtime and then diffuse or hooded dry the rest of the way. So this is after the hooded dry. You can see it's like mostly dry, the outside is dry. so. This is it, I just 
put a towel under my pillowcase and sleep on my morning it's fine and if it wasn't freezing outside like even like 30 something I would go outside like this because the outside is dry so it's just the root and stuff that needs to dry now So that's it, my winter wash and go routine. I have ultra low porosity, so I don't always need to use a cream or always choose to use a cream. So I didn't use a cream in this case, but this is a great cream to try if you're looking for a nice moisturizing cream during the winter. In the summer, I might do a wash and go in the morning and stuff, but in the winter, I try to do it the night before, just to give it that night time to finish drying or at least 99% drying so the next day it's pretty dry. Before I go to sleep I make sure that the outside of my hair is dry. So the cream as well as the oil are great for moisture retention. The other tips are more for fast drying. I know a lot of people are nervous about plopping but this is plopped and it's fine so even if your curls are tighter I don't think you should worry. I think plopping is kind of for most people, I wouldn't say for everyone because it's always somebody who, who something doesn't work for, but plopping definitely works fine for tighter curls as well. There's nothing to be worried about. So as soon as I finish my wash and go while it's still soaking wet, I plop my hair and I would leave it in the plop for like 20 minutes. You can leave it in for 15 or 30 or you can even take it out and plop it again like with another t-shirt. So those are some of the things I do sometimes. And I make sure I wrap it in such a way that the top is on the inside so this whole thing is like up and the top is on the inside so this part isn't affected by the t-shirt or touching the t-shirt at all so that does that helps prevent frizz so the part that's being dried by the t-shirt is in the back as you saw that really takes out a lot of water and it doesn't add frizz and it doesn't add shrinkage if you do it the way I do it it doesn't add shrinkage so there's really nothing to worry about in terms of plopping. I hope you enjoyed my winter wash and go process. Um, I guess this is the result. I didn't do my five minutes of duck face, but you know, I mean, it's just a typical wash and go. So, you know, I guess <laughs> typical wash and go. So yeah. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you do wash and goes in the winter or if you stop and why you stop if you do. I know some people want to protect the style in the winter. Just let me know what you're up to and when you do wash and goes if you do wash and goes. And let me know if you switch your products for the winter as well. See you in the next one. Bye.